What's up everybody, I'm MDW, it's Christmas Eve, and I thought I'd get in there with a last minute review. I got myself a little present a couple of weeks back, and lo and behold, it turns up just before Christmas for myself. Isn't that wonderful? <laughs> so we're going to be looking at the Deluxe Predator Leader 7-inch from NECA Toys, based on the original 90s Predator line. Let's open him up and take a look at him. Okay, so first off guys, there's a lot going on with the box. Loads of stills I've taken of it. It's a throwback to the 90s Predator line that Ken had done, where they did a series of Predator figures and Alien figures with a lot of crazy gizmos and gadgets and really kind of a reimagining or a different idea or take on the actual franchise themselves. They had loads of goofy guns, loads of crazy versions of the Predator and the Aliens. And this is like a direct descendant from that. So as you can see here, there's some great cartoon work going on inside the box. The colours are very vibrant. Look at that picture that's thrown there with that alien queen's head on it. I need to get all of that at some point. And the box inside there, all the grid work on it, very throwback retro to the original vintage line. Inside the box there, there's a predator in his clear packaging, and there's a little detail close up there of the figure within as well. The guy is huge, he's seven inches tall, so there's the comparison to the Colonial Rings from the NECA line as well. And you can see he towers above him, absolutely superb. Really, really cool figure. Okay guys, so we've had a look at him in the box and everything on the side of the box and the back. Let's have a look at the figure itself. So, first things first, this is an awesome figure. You've seen the size comparison, he is huge. Now, I know he's a deluxe figure, but he's massive. I'd only wish I've got another Predator figure to show you. I don't really have another NECA Predator to put him up against. Uh, I probably will remedy this and get a few of these because there's a whole new wave of them that's just come out, which I like the look of. But I thought I'd get the big honcho himself, the clan leader. I loved him in the film Predator 2. Uh, so this isn't obviously the same one, but this is just like a recreation of like just a typical Predator clan leader. He's got so much going on with him. The detail on him is absolutely superb. The colour scheme of him is very, very strange as well. He's kind of like a bright orange colour, as you can see. And he's got like dark blue kind of turquoise armour, which has been highlighted. Bits of silver all over him as well. Brown for the top of his skin, so he's kind of a two-tone. And then these black stripes all over him. His dreadlocks are the classic kind of white, like the elder predators have the white dreadlocks there. And you see he's got all the details on his face here. We've come to expect what Predator looks like. So yeah, the colour scheme is, is quite interesting. You know, he's, uh, he's bright orange and then the dark armour. It kind of goes well, actually. When I first got the box and I looked in, I was like, whoa, jeez, you know, like neon. But taking him out, it really is an excellent figure. Uh, so let me have a show you some of the details and then I'll go over the articulation. So his armour has got so much uh, detail in on the metalling on his armour there, so you can see all these bits of piping and metal work there. His belt has got loads of skulls on it and bits of, let's say again, metal and the strapping there. He's got some crazy kind of generator thing on his back. Now I thought this was his like cannon, shoulder cannon. I don't know what it's meant to be, but it's just a huge thing that's just coming out of his back. Looks like some sort of backpack there. So that's really cool. He's got loads of markings on his armour and he's got the skulls in the middle there and then the detailing you can't really see it his eyes i might try and take a still of his eyes there but you can see the pupil in his eye really looking evil it does look absolutely insanely good and the detailing on his mandibles as well inside his mouth and then of course the classic scar there on the top of his head to show that he's been blooded so he's killed many an alien in his time xenomorph and then his boots he's got his crazy kind of sandal things going on with loads of detailing around there, his claws are all been painted up, loads of metal work all over him there as well. So that's the detailing. What an incredible amount of detail for such a small figure. So let's run down the articulation on this guy. So you'd think that his head wouldn't move very much because of the dreadlocks. It does actually move quite a lot. So you can actually turn him left and right. It doesn't really go up, goes down a little bit. But the movement is a lot better than I thought it was going to be with all the dreadlocks. The dreadlocks are kind of like a, a really rubbery plastic. So they do move around quite a bit. They're not going to snap, but you can actually like pose them, which is quite cool. So you can like kind of you know, brush them back over his shoulder if you want there. And they kind of stay. They will ping back. I think if you heat them up with a hairdryer or something and you can bend them and then they cool down into pretty much whatever 
position you want them in. So that's that there. He's got a uh, shoulder joints so he's got a ball joint in his shoulder so his arms can rotate all the way around there which is good and he's got another joint just below uh, just above sorry his, his bicep there so his arm can go out as well really cool so that gives him another bit of movement and then there's a joint at the arm as well the elbow which literally just goes up and down that's not a ball joint that so that's on a hinge so that just goes up and down but obviously this here then allows him to do all the posing there and then his hand obviously spins 360 degrees round same with the other hand He's got a torso crunch there. Doesn't really do much, to be honest. Uh, you can't really move it, but his waist has got a bit of a torso crunch here, so you can kind of bend him forward there, back, and he's got a swivel there as well. Nice lot of articulation on his legs. His loincloth here doesn't really hinder the movement, so he's got a bit of strapping around there, but again, you know, you can't really kind of spread his legs right out, but he's got, like I say, ball joints there, so they can go forward, back, nice range of motion there. He's got a joint at the knee. Be careful with the knee joints, they're always a bit wonky. So you've got the knee joint there, um, which obviously can turn as well and go in and out. And then the foot as well, up and down. And I believe these are on a ball as well. They move left and right as well. Mine came loose when I took him out of the box, but I kind of popped the joint back in again. So I think it's kind of like the Hot Toys figures, the Star Wars ones, where you can kind of interchange you know, the joint. So you know, if it comes loose, you can just literally pop it back in again, and then it's just back to being how it was. So that's really cool. So a lot of movement there for such a big figure. And I say, none of his armor detail hinders any of the movement at all. So really, really made up with the amount of movement and posability you can get. You don't get any additional hands with him. So he's got one hand stuck in the, the pose of holding his weapon, which I'll show you what he gets in a second. And then the other hand is kind of, I don't know, kind of pointing or, you know, kind of grabbing something or, you know, showing his dominance to the, you know, talking, preaching to the rest of the predators. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that's you know, I ain't got a problem with that. That's why it moves around. It might have been perhaps cool to have an interchangeable hand, but yeah, I think I'm asking too much really. <laughs> so there we go. There's a look at the articulation of the Elder Predator. So the clan leader comes with a plethora of accessories. So you've got his helmet there. Quite a strange looking helmet. I'm not too sure I feel about that. Awesome double bladed weapon there as well. So it's got a big blade and a kind of an axy thing on the other end. All painted really well in metal. The classic shoulder cannon there. And then you've got the little plinth that the shoulder cannon sits on as well, so it's a two-part weapon. You get two crazy little plugs as well, which I'll show you what these are for. It took me a while to work out what they were for. And then the best thing of all, two chain rubber kind of movable tentacles that you can bend. So they've got wire in them and you can bend them to any pose you want as well. And these sit on the figure as well, and I'll show you how in a second. So first up, the shoulder cannon, like I said, comes in two parts. You've got the plinth there. Took me a while to figure out where it went. So on his shoulder there, there's a little hole at the top of his shoulder plate there, which the plinth kind of fits into. And then obviously, as you can work out there, there's a little hole at the bottom of his shoulder cannon, and then that just literally sits on there. And that's it, shoulder cannon assembly. The shoulder cannon can swivel left and right as well, and the plinth moves up and down. So it's got a good range of motion on the shoulder cannon as well. Next up is the helmet. It's quite a lot harder putting this helmet on this figure on uh, when you're trying to film on camera as well. But it does just literally clip over his mandible to the bottom there. It sits nicely on his head. It is a really strange design. It's almost kind of like insect-like. I don't know whether I like it or not. The detailing is really nice on it, but it just looks strange. I don't know. What do you think, guys? And then he's got two little kind of wiry bits that come out the side, which I think you just pop into the gun or under his shoulder plate there for a bit of extra detail. And then lastly, he's got so much going on. He's got two holes uh, just below his helmet there and one in each hand. You've got the option to put the kind of bendy tendril things either coming out of his uh, torso there or out of his hands. So they literally just fit in place there. They've got like a plug in them, so they just fit in. Um, and then you can literally bend them any way you want. Come out nicely or you can put them, like I said, just below his helmet there as well. Craziness. They look absolutely insane when they're in both of them. I think it's a bit of a throwback as well to the original Predator figure they've done with the clan leader. And then there you go, that's the two little silver pegs there. I believe it kind of acts as if there was another two tendrils that were sitting in there waiting to lash out. There we go everybody, there's a look at the 7 inch deluxe Predator from NECA Toys. Been waiting for this guy to come into the UK for a while now and he was absolutely superb. Such a great throwback to the original figure, which I urge you to check out to see the likeness of them. The packaging, the colour, the vibrancy of it, great throwback to the vintage line. The detailing and the absolute wicked paint job and accessories on this Predator makes him one of my most favourite figures I've reviewed in a really, really long time. 
I'm definitely going to be picking up some of these other Predator figures, so stay tuned. I'm going to do a few more reviews and maybe some of the crazy aliens that are coming out now as well from NECA. So that just leaves me to say, everybody, Merry Christmas. Have a great time. Hope you get loads of cool action figures. And I'll see you in my next video. MDW signing off. Merry Christmas. Go watch Home Alone as well. <laughs>